Hi, and welcome to this presentation. Uh, in this presentation, I will be talking about the economic evaluation for uh, upgrading and replacing a welding machine. Uh, and this is a case study. I would like, uh, first of all, uh, to thank my partners uh, who are students actually of mine. They took the, the course with me last year and uh, they graduated. They work in, in, the, wheel, in the welding industry. Uh, they are welders uh, and uh, they did collected the data. They presented this project uh, to me as a final project for my class economics and cost analysis. And uh, I, I thought this is a good idea. I shared with them that we were going to present at the, at the conference and, and they agreed and, and they're, uh, they were excited actually. They wanna go to ACME conference and, and uh, present themselves, but because of the COVID-19 and the restriction that we have and so on, they couldn't join me today in the presentation. So uh, I would love to you know, uh, uh, share with you this, this uh, this presentation and the result of the presentation. Uh, let's go ahead and start. My name is uh, Dr. Mahmoud Alode. I teach at the Minji State University in the uh, technology art and design. Uh, I teach mainly operations management uh, uh, courses such as uh, economics, cost analysis, uh, quality assurance, uh, uh, production planning and control. Uh, this is my specialty. This course in particular, this topic, this is my research interest. And I've been uh, teaching economics and cost analysis for about uh, 10 years. And uh, because this is a good uh, case study, I did include it in my book. I did author a textbook uh, for using economics and cost analysis using Excel. And the book is available on Amazon. So if you're interested, uh, go to Amazon, uh, look for economic and cost analysis for operations and project managers. And if you're interested in adopting this in your class, please let me know. I'll send you a free copy of, uh, of the textbook. But this, this case study is included. Again, thank you for uh, my, my Michaela and Eric. They, they did a great job of collecting the data. Uh, we put it together, we improved it. We, uh, now it's time to present it. Uh, all right, so now here, uh, uh, just as an introduction, uh, you, you know, uh, welding manufacturing as any other uh, industry, we, we are looking for continuous improvement. And one of the things that in the welding industry, they, they're looking for is improving the machines and buying new welders or welding machines, I should say. And also as an uh, as a, uh, as a economist or uh, cost analyst, we should take care of the financial aspect of decisions. So we need to make sure that even we're buying these equipments, we need to make sure these equipments are uh, uh, cost effective and, and we should include the power efficiency as well. In, in terms of the problem, what we are trying to do here, we're trying to solve uh, this, this case, uh, which is why uh, large scale manufacturing uh, should uh, update their welding machines from rectifiers to inverters. So this is the goal of this study. Uh, uh, just as, a, as an overview, as you know, the benefit of upgrading to a new machine would be including, uh, uh, you know, improve productivity, improve quality, uh, improve profits. And the same thing is uh, uh, reducing some of the energy cost. Just talking about the, an overview of the company that we worked with, uh, we, we are referring to this company as EM Transit. EM Transit is a company located in the state of Oregon and producing 1,245 buses on average per year. Uh, and there are uh, 36 welding machines where it needs to be replaced. Uh, we're not sure when we're going to replace it. Uh, and this is the whole idea is right now, these welding machines uh, uh, has a 23 years old. And as uh, you know, maybe you know that in the welding uh, industry, these welding machines will uh, last for 25 years. So there are two more years, there are two more years to be used before we retire these machines. Uh, 
just more information as, as a percentage of time, how much they spend in the welding department. They spend 54% of the time, which means that's equivalent to 108 man hours. So uh, in the welding uh, department, they more than half of the time, they're spending on welding the uh, welding these these buses in uh, the wire but the wires that are used the total pounds of wires would be 34.7 pounds and for this uh, company em transit they're currently using miller 450 with s60 feeders and just to be more specific and this is will help us with the calculation these are typically run at 25 volts uh, with a wire feed speed of 560 per minute and uh, amper amperage of 190 so 190 198 amp the travel speed is about 15 inches per minute Now, if we're talking about this, uh, now as a, as a part of this project, if we are able to justify the, the savings from financial perspectives, the result of this research will be uh, applied for another uh, welding plant facility, which is you know, the main company located in Oregon. Now there's another welding facility located in central Minnesota. So if this is the case, if, if we were able to justify the cost uh, and we thought this is an economically justified option, then we will be sharing this result with another plant. More details about this project. This project, uh, uh, we're going to look into these replacing the 36 welding machines. Uh, and, and what we're trying to do, these are uh, rectifier. Rectifier, basically an old version versus the new version of the welding machine, the inverter type. Uh, and uh, again, this is uh, the, the current welding machines, they have a 23 years old and the life expectancy is 25 years. So we are trying to make uh, the decision of this company should replace this mach these machines now or should, we, should they wait for two more years to replace them? Uh, and in this study, what we're going to do, we're going to look into two major brands that are available in the welding industry, and it's available in that area as well. These are Miller Electric or Lincoln Electric. Some, some idea on uh, the differences or why we encourage them to go to uh, retrofire, from retrofires to inverters, because uh, we, we, we did say there's some benefit. This is the new version, of course, of the welding machine, but some people, they still prefer to work with the older version. But let's take a look into some of the benefits here for uh, these uh, inverters. Inverters are electronic devices, electronic devices that are used for alternating current supply, uh, AC. They convert DC to AC. The advanced, uh, the advanced inverters have two power sources. This is the nice thing. They have two power sources, network EC and direct DC. Uh, and the nice thing, look at that, the, the, the uh, interruption when they switch from one source to another, it's a zero second, which, which, which means there is no interruption uh, in power when they move from one source to another. Uh, equipment has a duty cycle of 100% at 300 amps. Uh, welding arc time is able to remotely, to remotely monitor. So this is good for managers. They'd like to monitor these equipments, but they don't have time to go to the uh, floor. They could monitor it electronically where these uh, data saved in a database and managers could take a look into that. Uh, also, the, the disk uh, inverters uh, are able to... Uh, to, to, to use a program, updating programs by the supplier where they, after five, 10 years, whenever they think the company, they want to upgrade to the new version, they could do, they could do. There's a, a upgrade program uh, and they will take the, the, the old machines. Output AC voltage can be single phase or three phases or three phase. So it's, it's really up to uh, what's the available for 
uh, for the company. So if you are a small uh, manufacturer, you maybe you don't have the three phase uh, electricity, you could go with a, a one phase, a single phase, and this is would be applicable. This could be working for you. All right, so now moving into uh, the uh, cost analysis in particular, the first thing that we need to do is to talk about the electric consumption. Okay, this is uh, uh, how much uh, these would work. So we know that in the buses will uh, stay 54% uh, of the time, which means 108 hours. So now we need to convert this time into uh, electricity consumption. So what we did here is uh, calculating what would be the hours of the arc time uh, per, per, per bus, and then uh, converted, uh, uh, th that would be the 50, 108 times 54, and that give you uh, 58 hours. And then uh, 58 hours just for welding. And now this is for only one bus. Now multiply that by the number of buses, 1,245. Of course, I'm trying to simplify it as much as I can. So you could, uh, you, uh, you, could follow, uh, you could follow me and you could know exactly what I'm talking about. So, uh, so we know that the total uh, welding hours per year for all the buses to be 72,608 hours. Now we're going to uh, find out what would be the total power, which is 198 times tw uh, 25 volt. And that would give you an output power to be 4.95 kilowatt. The output to be uh, 4.5 uh, 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 kilowatt. Now, moving into the uh, uh, cost per year. So now what we need to do, we need to consider the uh, efficiency of these machines. Yes, the uh, the output is uh, the output is uh, four point. Uh, did we say four? Uh, uh, four point nine five. This is the output. But what is the input? Because we know that welding machine it does not give you the same. Uh, the input and the output is not going to be the same. There is some energy lost in the transfer phase. So now we need to consider the efficiency of the welding machine. The efficiency of the welding machine is 74.35. And this is based on the website in, in the, the supplier website where they're saying, okay, yeah, the efficiency is 74% for this type of machine. And therefore the, the input the input, the, the, the electricity that has been used by the machine should be considered efficiency. So we divide the 4.95 by the efficiency that will give you an input of 6.65 kilowatt. Now, in order to find the electricity cost, what we did, we multiply that by the, uh, by the cost per, uh, per one kilowatt, which is in that area to be 13.19 cent. Uh, and so the cost to power the machines, the electricity cost for the machines, for all the machines, for the welding machine to be 63,761. So now this is a very good uh, input that we should use to compare it with the other, with the rest of the alternatives that we have. So now the next thing that we need to consider, another important parameter that is considered in this study is the trade-in value. So the, the supplier, they said, okay, if we want to take the old machine with a two-year lifetime in them, we can pay uh, we could pay uh, 1,900 per, per machine. And, uh, and that would be for 36 machines, that would be equivalent to 68,400. And now let's go into uh, the potential replacement for option one. Again, there are two options, Miller and Lincoln Electric. And now for option one, we need to consider again, the same way what we're going to do. We're going to consider the uh, efficiency. We're going to uh, assume that's the, the, the input and the output the same. Uh, so now we're going to find out what would be uh, the cost for this option. So the first option in, in this table, as you see, uh, first of all, 90% is the efficiency. Again, this is based on the uh, website for, uh, for uh, Miller. Uh, assuming the output to be the same 495, divide that by the efficiency. So the input to be 5.5 and uh, multiply that once you did uh, multiply that by the uh, the cost per uh, kilowatt, that will give you 52,673, the cost for that machine. Uh, uh, the, the cost 
for electricity if we upgrade to Miller Electric. Now on the right side here, what you see, there are more details, uh, but we're going to cover some of this uh, here in this presentation. Uh, for, on the right side, you will see all the details about the uh, ex accessories and the tools needed for that type of machine. Uh, and as you see, this would be uh, the, 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 the cost for one machine to be 10,479 times 36. That will give you this number, 377,244. And now the value we should consider the, um, uh, the traded value, which is here it's in the table called uh, salvage value of 68,400. 68, uh, now this is an, 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 a new uh, a, a, a parameter important. There is a, a rebate, uh, an incentive from the local power company. They're saying, okay, if you want to go apply for this grant, you can you can get this much amount of money. So uh, that incentives would be forty three two hundred, and the company would be uh, would apply all the sh the conditions and requirements. So it does fit. So they are eligible to take this incentive. So, and this will be taken out from the initial cost, uh, 43,200. Uh, so the net initial cost, the final initial cost for this investment to be 265,644. And again, this is for uh, five, uh, 25 years. Moving into the second option, option two here, uh, option two, uh, same thing we did. The only difference would be the uh, e efficiency, the efficiency for the uh, the machines, the efficiency for the machine to be 87%. Again, this is according to the website, the supplier, they say this is the efficiency. We use the same input, uh, the same uh, output 495, 4.95, divide that by the efficiency to give us the input to be 5.68. And now multiply that by the cost for a kilowatt. That will give you 54, 54,490, the cost for electricity if we're going to switch to this option too. Now on the right side table here, what you see also more detailed uh, uh, information that we used in the calculation. Uh, again, the, uh, uh, some um, accessories that we need for the machine. And we calculated the cost for one, which is 10,210. Uh, total initial cost to be uh, 367,560. Uh, salvage value from uh, old machines to be 68,400. Uh, and the rebate and the incentives coming from, uh, uh, from, the, local, uh, from the local electric company to be uh, 43,200. The net cost, the net initial cost for this investment of this option too, Lincoln Electric would be 255,960. And again, this will last for another uh, 25 years. Okay, now let's go to the process of making decisions. So now we collected all the data that we need. Now it's time to make a decision. And again, just a reminder, what is the decision that we made, what, that we're trying to make? Should they keep this Miller 450 for the next two years, or they should upgrade the equipment uh, uh, now, or they should upgrade the equipment now, now. And if they wanna upgrade the equipment, which one of them, which one of them should be, um, should be uh, upgraded to? Um, Again, the electricity, the, the company, as, as most of the companies, they are aware of some of the benefits of upgrading to a newer machines, such as productivity, quality, et cetera. So they are aware, but hopefully this report will give them a proof that about the replacement decision, what decision should be they make based on a financial perspective. The time value of money is considered here to be 10%, uh, I equal to 10%. Uh, there is no salvage, we consider that there's no salvage value for the new equipment. Uh, for the, assuming that they're gonna use it for 25 years, there's no other salvage value. And now we're moving into the uh, uh, analysis. What we did, we built a cash flow here on, on, uh, on, uh, on this slide, as you see. Uh, we, we recorded all the uh, cash flows based on the cost, based on the initial cost, and eventually we calculated the uh, annual cost. This is what we need, the PMT, using the PMT 81,000 
for the first option and 82,000 for the second option. And now uh, what time is to uh, make uh, a conclusion. And again, what we did here, we did uh, initial cost 265,000 for the first one, 255. And we on the cash flows for 25 years, we recorded the electricity cost. Uh, that's the only cost. We ignored the maintenance cost because uh, we assume that the, the company will include uh, the maintenance costs with this deal. So they're gonna come to uh, do the maintenance uh, for them every year. So there's no uh, maintenance cost. Uh, and now that would leave us, that will take us to the conclusion. What is the conclusion? Now uh, let's uh, take a look into what we have. The current cost for the current machine is 63,761. The, co the annual cost for uh, Miller 450, the new option, or which is option one, it's 81,939. The third, the second option, the Lincoln option, would be 82,000 per year. Now, from a financial perspective, and as you know, we are a cost analyst, we go with the lower cost. As you see, the annual cost for the current machine is the lowest cost, and therefore we should our recommendation is to keep the current machines for two more years and then replace it with Miller XMT 450 after two years because this is would be the lowest option. Well, that said, I'd like to thank you so much. These are the references that I've listed. The textbook that I mentioned earlier in the video, this is the textbook. So take a look into it. Again, if you want to adopt this textbook, please let me know. I will be happy to give you a free copy of that. There's some resources about the power efficiencies and uh, uh, some uh, of the calculation. With that said, I would like to thank you so much. There is a Q&A uh, Q session in, uh, in the conference. I hope to see you there. So uh, to answer your questions, I'll... With that said, I'll say thank you and enjoy, enjoy your conference.